Hello everyone, it's me Arden Lee and in this video I'm going to be answering a question from one of the members of the Repatterning Parlor who wants to get some greater clarity on what direction they should take their work in in that sort of awkward phase between end of school and beginning of their career. Uh, so we're going to get into that and uh, in the meantime uh, if you haven't yet joined the Repatterning Parlor, which is the free group that I moderate on Facebook, I'd love to invite you to check out the description box of this video where I have a link to the group. And I'd love to invite you to come and make some new friends, get some support from like-minded individuals, and you'll also be able to request topics for these videos. So if there's something that you'd like to see me address, come on over to the parlor. That is absolutely uh, where to connect with me and uh, the community that surrounds this work. So I'd love to see you there. All right, so when I get into this question, I want everyone to know, first of all, that <laughs> um, I'm going to be speaking from a heart-centered place. I do not consider myself <laughs> someone who is um, a career counselor for um, specifically for uh, post-collegiate graduates. Because I myself, when I was that age, <laughs> I'm like totally unqualified to, uh, <laughs> to give advice about that, <laughs> considering my past, right? <laughs> um, I went to NYU. I went to NYU for theater and I graduated and I spent about a year bartending because that's what you do with a theater degree. <laughs> and I was auditioning too and I, you know, I was making actually uh, some pretty good progress getting hired uh, to do regional theater. Um, I actually got to do a couple of paid shows, which was pretty cool. And, um, but very quickly, um, things started to sort of fall apart around me. And I realized that I didn't want to be doing a lot of the shows that were on offer to me, uh, you know, because I just wasn't feeling, um, it was sort of like you guys, I mean, really what it was, and it, this isn't really super relevant, but I'll say it anyway, is that uh, after 9-11, which happened uh, when I was in college, um, after 9-11, things in the musical theater world in New York began to change a lot and people weren't taking as many creative risks. And so that's when you started seeing all of these shows come up that were just like based on movies and a lot of them were, uh, were really not very good and not very like, um, there just wasn't as much like uh, artistic risk taking before as before. So I got really super jaded and I was like, oops, I just got this degree in theater and I kind of don't want to do what's out here. What do I do with my life? And I became a professional dominatrix. <laughs> and for those of you who had followed my story, um, you'll know how about four years after that, uh, it became a, an incredibly bad decision. <laughs> well, it, it was progressively a worse and worse decision the longer that I stayed into it. Um, or was it, right? Because, um, uh, because uh, there was a lot of persecution that happened there. I was outed as a sex worker in the New York Post. I bailed my then boyfriend, who was also my boss, out of jail for 25 grand. He is still paying me back those legal fees, <laughs> however many years later it's been. And, uh, uh, and I would not recommend anyone go into that field. And yet, it is the sum of my experiences today that allows me to do the work that I do. And if I had not had my trauma, if I had not made all the decisions that I'd made, if I had not gotten myself into those situations, I wouldn't be here teaching what I have to teach. So giving career advice is a little tricky when you're someone who's also on a spiritual path because you can be making decisions in the moment that look <laughs> uh, terrible on paper and yet those experiences may inform the very work that you end up doing years later which you won't even be able to see <laughs> at the time that you're in those situations right what's really interesting is that uh, a couple of years ago I had my birth chart read uh, by a woman named Laura Eisenhower who is uh, someone who is uh, someone who speaks about the ascension process um, with a lot more galactic knowledge than I have. <laughs> um, I really love her talks. I'm not going to pretend that I understand everything that she says, but I know that there is enough she says that really resonates with me that I'm very drawn to her work. And so I went and I had my chart read by her. And what she said was, um, she said, wow, there was clearly an abuse of authority in your childhood. 
and uh, there's a lot of trauma to work through. Um, but as I'm looking at your chart, I'm seeing that where all of this goes is as a gift to humanity. Uh, not only are you going to heal yourself, but you're not going to just be like, oh, uh, I got over it or whatever. But everything uh, that you're bringing in is actually you were meant to be a teacher uh, in this regard. You are meant to. And this was like, you guys, this was before, um, like, this was like 2017. So this was bef like a year before, uh, like, well over a year before the repatterning project was even like a glint in my eye, right? So this wasn't her just like reading my Facebook profile and telling me, telling me what was what I was already doing. I think I had mentioned maybe that I was like, uh, you know, uh, in the process of looking into some trauma healing or whatever when I spoke with her um, in terms of my spiritual path. Uh, but what she said is she was like, you're going to do this work. It's going to become a teaching for other people. You're going to activate and upgrade um, a lot of the rest of the collective by being able to teach and explain what you yourself have learned. And she also said, you know, and, and you're also uh, uh, the ways that um, uh, that your creativity and your artistic ex expression are also uh, linked into this work, um, you know, uh, are also going to feed into that as well. And naturally, you know, I do a lot of my artistic expression through my band, Arden and the Wolves, where I write songs as intentional workings of magic, mostly for myself, but also for other people to be able to use and tap into, um, you know, to, uh, uh, to facilitate, uh, you know, getting that, that healing, not only in our minds, but with a song, getting it into our bodies, into our bloodstreams as well, right? So, there's no way that I can look at that path and have ever known what was going to happen when I came out of college, <laughs> right? Even if that had been predicted, what am I going to do? Go and seek out a bunch of trauma so I can later, you know, teach people how to heal it. So what I want to bring to this video and to this discussion is just a sense of lightness. I want to bring a sense of lightness in terms around of, you know, this person is asking, you know, hey, should I go and enroll in another program so I can maybe get another better job? Um, or should I go straight into the workforce? Should I give up the idea that there is such a thing as a better job um, because, you know, it's capitalism and I'm just going to be miserable either way, uh, you know, or is that me uh, indoctrinating myself with the toxic beliefs of capitalism and should I strive for, for something that is, is better or more aligned, right? These are all great questions and I'm never going to be able to answer them for anyone personally because everyone's going to have a different answer. What I will be able to direct people to do is to really feel it in your heart and cultivate enough of a relationship with your body to where your body really tells you what you feel about things and be able, be able to sit and imagine those different circumstances that you're weighing and ask your body how your body feels about those things. Do you feel excited about the idea of going to a program to get another certification to potentially uh, potentially have a better job in the future? Let me ask you, does it feel exciting to go back to school? For some people, they might answer, no, I'm just going to be toughing it out so I can maybe get a better job somewhere down the line. That's also a choice, right? But it's a choice we want to be aware of. How likely is that field to remain unchanged given its history by the time you graduate that next program, right? That's probably something that you want to look at. If that job is important to you enough, you might feel excited about going back to school and you might be like, yeah, I want to get that certification. And I don't think I'm ready to be in the workforce yet. I want to stay in school longer. This feels good to my body. Great. Or you might check in with yourself and you might be like, you know what? No, I don't want to go back to school at all. And actually, this is just me thinking about what I should do in terms of, uh, you know, uh, what I think my career should look like. Um, but I don't even know if I want that bigger, better job. I don't even know if I'm aligned with that job. And if you're asking that question, that's probably about where you're at, right? Because if you were certain about it, it would feel like more of a yes in your body. So what I want to encourage all of us to do is to just really be attuned to our hell yes. What is that thing that we are a real hell yes to? And in a weird way, you guys, I was a hell yes to my job as a dominatrix. I uh, was bartending at the time and I was pretty miserable bartending. And this idea of being this glamorous um, sex worker, uh, you know, and, and, and 
being among these these this house of women um, who looked so cool and so edgy, you know, there was something about that that was calling to me. Now, it ended up in many ways being what a lot of people would qualify as a big disaster in terms of how it turned out. But I'm here today and I have a lot of knowledge that a lot of people don't. And uh, in terms of dealing with uh, say people's kinks and fetishes and uh, understanding sexuality and understanding where that comes from. I got a lot of knowledge from that. I also got a lot of practice holding space for very delicate conversations and very delicate sessions <laughs> when I was that young, which undoubtedly <laughs> helped me to be able to hold space for people today too. One of the kind of cool things about working with people for me is that there is very little you can say that can shock me. <laughs> There's really probably nothing at all. Um, and a lot of that I owe to the time that I worked as a dominatrix. Would I recommend working as a dominatrix? No, but I do recommend following your heart. And at that point in my life, I was following my heart. So another thing I want to release us from is this idea that in those years following college, that it's like this make or break time where we either get on this career train or we don't. And as we know, as we've been watching the way that our economy is unfolding and our job market is unfolding, we no longer have the secure job market that our parents had, where it was like, we got one job when we graduated college and we stayed there for like 25 years and we got a watch and a big party, right? <laughs> and a pension. Uh, we are in a gig economy for sure. And in many ways, um, we are not being called to go about things with the same sense of permanence, right? So in many ways, these years after college, I want to encourage us, if I could, I would really encourage us to use these years to explore what are the skills that I want to get for myself, not because I think they're going to look good on resume necessarily, but because I really want them, because I'm feeling called to these things. Uh, because these experiences are calling to my heart and this is the kind of work I want to do in the world or this is what I want to learn. And, uh, and what you'll find, I want to recommend a book to you guys if you're in this position and specifically to the person who asked this question. Uh, I, really, I really hope they pick up a copy of this book. It's called Mastery. It's by Robert Greene, the same guy who wrote The uh, 48 Laws of Power and The Art of Seduction. By the way, Robert Greene is featured in a bonus interview for those people who sign up for the full course of the Repatterning Project. So uh, if you like his work, <laughs> he, got, uh, he drops a lot of really great wisdom in the exclusive interview that we have as a bonus to the Repatterning Project content. So, uh, so check that out, by the way, if you're interested in signing up. Our next container is going to be summer 2020. Um, he wrote this book, Mastery, and he talks about how people who have had real excellence in their fields, often the way they go about things is they'll follow these skills that are in their heart's path and they'll end up having this thing where they combine them, right? They'll take all these unique things that call to them and in the conglomeration of those skill sets, they will find their zone of genius and they'll find that thing that they are meant to do. And somehow it will be a combination of all of those things that they've accumulated throughout their path of following their bliss and following their heart. So that's what I'm going to recommend uh, for everyone. You know, there's a reason things call to us. And ultimately, uh, you know, we want to, uh, we want to make work for ourselves that won't feel miserable, right? That won't feel like, oh, I just have to show up here because it's capitalism, right? <laughs> um, capitalism might suck, but our work doesn't have to. And I want to give us permission to follow our hearts, follow our bliss, and to trust that the things that we are meant for are those things that are closest to our hearts. And by following our hearts, the things that we are most in alignment with offering the world in exchange for our sustenance, for our sustaining our, our life on the planet, um, are going to be those things that are closest to our heart. So that's what I want to encourage us to follow. When I went on this journey of trauma healing and repatterning, I had no idea I would end up teaching this. I think there was part of me that was documenting it, you know, and keeping track of everything because um, my brain naturally is, is given toward explanation, right? But I wasn't thinking about that at the time. I couldn't even see my hand in front of my face, to be honest. Um, and here's where I ended up, right? 
when I decided to commit to this, the rest of it was just a matter of making it happen. So the thing is, we may not know what we want to commit to when we're still in our 20s because we may not have had all of the experiences or learned all of the skill sets that are going to lead up to what we ultimately eventually do, right? There's no way I could have created the repatterning project when I was 23. <laughs> so give yourself permission to bring a sense of lightness to this exploration. And all I'll say is that don't obligate yourself to do something just because you feel like you should. If there's a reward, a light at the end of the tunnel, that's a great thing. But the more and more you can bring yourself closer to following what is in your heart, whether that's learning about it or going into the field, follow what is in your heart and everything else um, will come forward and help you to prop that up uh, once it becomes something that you're, you're sure you want to commit to. Um, for me, uh, you know, becoming a coach was, um, you know, creating a business around my course essentially was something that I had to learn, but following my heart was the spiritual journey in the first place and wanting to help others and wanting to teach what I had learned was where my heart was calling me. And then filling in the details and building the foundation under it, that was just something that I had to figure out, right? But once I was in alignment with it, the figuring out of that part got a lot easier. So I hope this was helpful advice and um, I'll be interested to know uh, which route you go down. So thank you again for asking this question and I hope this was helpful for everyone. I'll see you next time.